Good afternoon, Vanishi. Vanishi Walters. Um, you are welcome to Indian News Link. It's a pleasure having you. We are delighted that uh, someone like you has been elected as Member of Parliament from Upper Harbour. And we look forward to uh, working with you. And uh, as you begin, would you like to uh, greet Indian News Link readers and tell us something about yourself? Absolutely. Well, namaste and vanakam ayaboan. Kia ora tato. Um, what an extraordinary pleasure to be with you today. My greetings to all the Indian Newslink viewers, um, but also to all of you around the world who may be tuned in. It is just an extraordinary pleasure and I'm so humbled uh, to be the incoming MP for Upper Harbour here in Auckland, New Zealand and the first Sri Lankan born Member of Parliament. Um, a little bit about my history. My family came to New Zealand from uh, Sri Lanka via Africa in 1987 um, and we lived in Wellington for quite some time and then travelled up to Auckland. Um, and really my background has been largely about working in the field of human rights and that's been in organisations like Amnesty International, it's also been in working in community law as a lawyer and it's been working at the Human Rights Commission and while I actually had never intended to um, run for politics, I certainly feel like I'll be maintaining that focus on human rights as I turn this corner and wear a new hat as one of the new MPs. Um, and I think for me, the big things on my agenda are of course looking after the interests of the electorate and listening to what's happening on the ground so I can best represent the people of Upper Harbour. But it's also considering some of the big issues that are front of mind for migrant communities here in New Zealand. One of the big things uh, that has always had an impact on me is discrimination. Um, as it happens in New Zealand, whether that's in employment, at schools or online. And so I'll be really working hard to ensure that we're checking that our discrimination laws are up to standard and are still fit for purpose. Um, you mentioned about discrimination um, and also your background in human rights as well as uh, public law, community law. Uh, what challenges do you think New Zealand faces in uh, its march towards multiculturalism? Are we uh, really moving towards that or are there forces pulling us back? Because we have a Human Rights Commission which constantly tells people that there are uh, challenges. Uh, there is uh, hate speech which is mm -hmm. growing and uh, discrimination of all kinds in all kinds of places, workplaces and society, etc. So as an advocate of uh, public law and as an advocate of uh, anti-discrimination, um, what changes do you think uh, you and your government will be able to usher in? Yeah. I think there absolutely are still issues. We saw after March 15, not a resurgence of new forms of discrimination, but actually in bubbling stories of discrimination that had happened before March 15th as well. I think it just meant that we were more aware of what was out there. And it's certainly something that the Human Rights Commission has raised. One thing that was really troubling to me is that even as we went into lockdown, the Commission was reporting an increase in the discrimination right. that was being felt, particularly by Asian communities. Yeah. My view is that there are a number of things we need to do. It starts with the Human Rights Act itself. So the provisions of the Act haven't really been reviewed since, since the Act was put into place. And it is absolutely time for us to look at the grounds of discrimination, whether they're adequate, but also, as you mentioned, Section 61, which is sort of that de facto hate speech provision yeah. to see whether it's adequate. This is something that Minister Little, when he was Minister of Justice, flagged early on. So my hope is that a second term Labor, Labor government is the right time for us to do that review. There's a useful third piece as well, and this was a recommendation that came from uh, the Committee on the Elimination of Racial Discrimination, so UN Committee. Right. They said what we needed to do is put in place a national action plan against racism. Um, and this isn't about having a string of words or you know some, some paper that sits on a shelf. Mm. It's really about looking at what the specific mechanisms we need to have in place 
uh, are on the ground. So it's things like making sure we're collect collecting data about the experience of racism and discrimination. So then when we put in measures, we can actively assess how well we're doing. There's a last piece about culture. <laughs> and I often think that people think cultural change is one of the easiest things to do. It's not. It's absolutely one of the most complex and difficult yeah. things. It needs to be invested in. And what I mean by culture change is thinking about how we're talking to children and young people at school, what programs we're actively putting in place and funding so that right from the very beginning, young people are learning skills in terms of um, cultural interaction. I think what I'll remember from the last few months is there was this statement by a Nobel Prize win winning economist who said two things about New Zealand's approach to COVID. He said, one, we have a leader who is looking and taking a scientific approach and that that's rather extraordinary, which it shouldn't be <laughs> for the world, but it is. <clears throat> and that's fantastic. But he also said that we have a population of people who understand that our actions impact others. And so in terms of the response that we've taken, I'm so proud of, of our first term Labour government's approach to addressing COVID. But I also think as New Zealanders, we ought to be proud of each other because it's something that we've all followed through on. And now as we enter a second term Labour government, this is an agenda that we really need to continue. I think for me, one of the the key things I'm going to be focused on is ensuring that small and medium businesses, particularly within my electorate, are doing well and also that those who are starting a new business are looked after and supported to do well. So it's going to be an extraordinary second term Labour government and I'm hoping to really contribute on those fronts, but also uh, have a keen eye to the legal framework, in particular the human rights framework, where I think I can add some, some good value. So kia ora tato, and thank you so much for having me on. Thank you, Vanishi. We can expect uh, you to be a very active member of parliament. Um, as you come in for the first time into parliament, we wish you well, as we said, and we will look forward to interacting with you from time to time. And as you know, please feel free uh, whenever you want to tell the world or anyone about uh, your uh, passion <coughs> for so many things about New Zealand. We are always here to uh, promote your thoughts. And thank you. Thank you for coming this afternoon to Indian Newslink office. Kia ora. God bless.